So I want to talk today about resistance. Okay, resistance, capital R. We said that R was measured in something called ohms, right? And the symbol for the ohms was uh, the Greek letter omega, crazy looking thing there. Uh, we said that uh, resistance was an object's tendency um, uh, to uh, make it more difficult for charge to flow. Okay? Now, that's sort of like the negative view of resistance, whereas uh, res the resistance of an object determines whether or not charge is allowed to flow. Um, remember that resistance also talks about um, the degree to which an object converts electrical energy to another form as charge flows through it. Okay, so last thing I want to remind us is that the more resistance a path has, the less current that flows, right? That's where we got that from. So, well, what is it about a pathway that determines the degree to which current flows down that pathway, or how much current's allowed to flow. Well, this is all happening at the atomic level. Because remember, what is happening at the atomic level is that we have uh, protons that are arrayed in um, uh, a, a structure. I think we can go back to that. So here I have a bunch of protons here. All right, let's see my quarters are my protons. And if this object is neutral, then they have electron partners, right? And we have this there. Okay. So what's happening here is something is happening to this path that's trying to force the electrons to flow, okay? And so we call that the potential difference, uh, some sort of highly charged negative object here that's gonna try and push my negatives along the way because they're weakly bound, right? The protons can't really move because they are strongly bound in place uh, because that's the way that nature is structured. So what is it that allows for the easier flow of these uh, electrons compared to other things? That's what determines what's going on with resistance. So uh, just keep that in mind and uh, we're gonna come back to that. But we're gonna find out that there are four factors that affect resistance. Okay. And the first of the four, and this should make a total lot of sense is, well, actually before we get to that, we talk about charge flowing. Like if I have a battery and then I have my wires and my light bulb and whatnot, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a circuit, all of that. Um, where does the charge come from that flows? Well, I think uh, something really important that I need to state here uh, that I probably should have stated a lot earlier is um, that the, uh, the battery is not the source of charge. The battery is the reason why the charge that's existing there moves. When I built this structure of uh, you know my atoms with uh, their uh, electron and, pro and uh, nucleus partners here, this is actually uh, what I was picturing were the atoms and the wire itself, right? Because there are electrons existing in all materials. Just when I put a battery that, that has a uh, large concentration of negatives over here, it forces the already existing electrons in the wire to start moving from atom to atom, okay? So, when I say factors that affect resistance, know that the electrons that are forced to flow were originally attached to atoms. 
So the first factor that affects resistance is the material in question. And the reason why is because different materials hold on to electrons differently. Right? That's why things like copper and gold are good conductors. If I say something is good conductors, those materials don't tend to have as much resistance because they give up their electrons to flow uh, a lot more simply than something like plastic, which we use for insulation because plastic, the electrons in it are, are not very easy, easily allowed to flow through it. Okay, now that's the easy one. So next, let's imagine I have, um, you know, my, my, my solid here, and the solid's arrayed in like this structure, okay? And I have these electrons over here that are uh, being forced to flow through, right? Forced to flow through this solid. Now you can see that depending on where the electron is going, because these atoms are spaced out differently, um, that they can either flow easily through it or uh, like this electron, which is very close to this, uh, because electrons are negative, the nucleus is positive, might get pulled into there. This one might get easily through. Oh, that one gets pulled in easily through, pulled in easily through, right? So if they get too close to the nuclei, they stop flowing. Or maybe what happens is if this thing already has enough electrons, this one pulls it in, dislodging that one, which goes here. But it's not a very efficient flow at that point. So anytime they get too close to the nucleus, um, they stop flowing, right? They get trapped in there. And so there's a couple of things that can happen here. If I have a lot of electrons here, if, um, if my pathway is really thin, right? It's very hard for things to get through that pathway. And so the next factor that's gonna affect resistance, and this is gonna be thing two, is gonna be cross sectional area of the wire, right? Thicker wires have literally just more space for electrons to go through, making it easier for them to flow. So a uh, larger cross-sectional area, smaller resistance, okay? Um, that's why you'll notice, folks, if I have like a really powerful device, like a big heavy duty device, you'll notice they have thicker cords. And they have thicker cords because you want less resistance for those really powerful devices like air conditioners and whatnot. But something easy like a lamp or a vacuum cleaner, uh, you'll notice their power cords are not that thick, right? The next thing here, here's my structure, right? Um, it's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm displaying the path of these electrons as, um, as like really linear and nice, but really there's, there, these electrons are all influencing each other and they're repelling each other. So their paths are usually a lot more erratic than I was making them. And there's a lot more electrons than what I'm picturing here. So that path is erratic. So there's kind of like a probability of whether or not it's gonna encounter one of these things. And the further it has to go, the more likely it is that it's going to encounter one of the nuclei. And so at that point, we can see that the length of the wire matters. So the longer the wire, the greater the resistance. Because there's more likelihood that, it will, that any given electron will encounter a nucleus and then stop flowing. Right, so longer wires tend to uh, be more difficult. That tends to be why, like when you have things like a charging cord. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, when you get a device from like Apple or Android, the the standard length of the charging cord is about three feet. Have you noticed that when you get the six feet or the ten feet uh, long cords, that your it takes longer to charge your phone? That's because those wires have a lot more resistance and less energy is being delivered to your phone. You will also note that those wires that are longer, the charging wires that are longer, heat up 
much more rapidly than the other ones. That's energy that's wasted that should be going to your phone that's not going to your phone. That's why shorter wires are better for charging. Now, granted, they're not that convenient when you're trying to do stuff while your phone is plugged in, but your phone is gonna get charged a hell of a lot quicker with a shorter wire than with a longer wire. Okay, so different materials affect resistance differently. Thicker wires have less resistance. Um, longer, uh, sh th shorter wires have less resistance, or we could say that um, uh, thinner wires have more resistance, longer wires have more resistance. The last factor here is going to be temperature. So hopefully you learned that temperature is about the motion of molecules last year in chemistry. Now, it may be very tempting to think that we're talking about the motion of these electrons. That's not what temperature talks about. Temperature actually talks about the vibration of the nuclei. So nuclei are not just sitting still. Even though they're in this structure, they're vibrating back and forth. And the higher the temperature, they, the more they vibrate. So, um, um, which is, in which case is it easier to get for these electrons to get through? Let's say they're trying to get through here. If, the te if these are vibrating a little bit or a lot. So I think it's pretty uh, clear that when these are vibrating just a little bit, that it's easier for the electrons to get through. Therefore, higher temperatures mean more resistance. And that's why um, when your wires start to heat up on your charging devices, it actually even slows down the rate at which your phone charges up. Uh, so that's even a better reason why those long charging cords are terrible. To give you another analogy of this, imagine, uh, have you ever played the game in a crowded hallway of like, um, uh, you know, I don't touch anyone but get through the crowded hallway? I don't know, stupid things that go through my head, right? If people are standing still in the hallway, it's a lot easier to get through that hallway, but if they're moving around really quickly, it's harder to dodge everyone. That's the same thing here, because at the end of the day, Higher resistance means fewer electrons are allowed to, are flowing, either because they're held on to the uh, atoms originally, or they get trapped on the atoms as they're trying to flow. So as we're, we're thinking about these things, that's what we're talking about in terms of what's happening internally within our resistors. So for example, different light bulbs have different resistance because if you look at it, inside the light bulb, all that is is a really long wire made out of a wire called tungsten. Um, and you can choose different uh, light bulbs because that, that um, thing inside of it, right, like the, the, the curly Q there, that's called the filament in the light bulb. And those filaments are different lengths for different power light bulbs, right? And that's actually all that's happening in other uh, materials. If you look in your toaster, if you have a toaster or a toaster oven, you will see a wire with a very specific length and a very specific thickness made out of a very specific material um, that um, is doing that. And those lengths and thicknesses and materials are chosen in order to achieve the purpose that that resistor is trying to achieve. So those are the factors that affect resistance.